Hello, everyone, and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ, or as I like to call it, Webinar Thursdays. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today for our Back to Basics Drafting with Precision webinar. My name is Sarah Emsley, and I am tuning in from our Oregon office here in Lake Oswego. For all of you joining us today, and it's still morning, I hope we have all had our coffee fix. I know I have. And for everyone else joining, and it's the afternoon or early evening, hang in there. It's almost the weekend. Presenting today's webinar is the all-star Volker Coco. And we also have our expert elite, the awesome Naman Mysore Walla, helping answering questions and moderating this webinar. Like I said, my name is Sarah Emsley. I will be one of the web moderators for today's webinar. I am a product support specialist here at Autodesk, and I have previously worked with AutoCAD for the Marines as a civil service employee out in Kaneohe, Hawaii. I am fairly new to Autodesk, but the more I learn and the more I work here, the more I want to share that knowledge with all of you. So mahalo for joining. And I'll go ahead and pass it over to Naman so that he can share a little bit about himself with all of you. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks again for joining us uh, on the uh, uh, webinar. And uh, my name is Naman Maisarwala. I'm an uh, expert elite with Autodesk. And uh, I don't work for Autodesk. I'm one of the users, and I've been using AutoCAD. Uh, I started using AutoCAD when I was 12 years old, so it's been a long time. And I've uh, been uh, working as a BIM manager at GDB and Architect in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I live in Westchester, the suburb of Cincinnati. So thanks for joining us. And now let's hear a little bit about our presenter, Volker Coco. Volker? Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, all of those who have uh, returned, we appreciate you being here. And for those of you who are new, to this. It's really good to see you. So my name is Volker Coco. I'm also a Autodesk Technical Support Specialist here in the Lake Oswego, Oregon office. I've been using AutoCAD since release 10 and um, that means I've been using it about as long as Sarah is old. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking about that. But anyway, re release 10. Um, so uh, at one time, I guess I'm considered an old schooler now. I've been working uh, uh, both as a drafter, CAD manager, uh, I've worked for resellers, and currently, of course, I'm working for Autodesk, and I do love my job. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, my dog Winter says hello to Renee. So. Uh, we Before we get started, we typically do a little bit of housekeeping here, and one of the things we want to point out is that uh, you've received a reminder, and you'll be uh, with some additional links in it. We'll talk about those in a second. Uh, feel free to leave questions in the chat window, okay? Um, Naman and uh, Sarah will be answering those questions, but we will also have a Q&A at the end of the webinar. This session will be recorded, and those link, the link to the recording, as well as this PowerPoint and any uh, uh, data set will also be made available to you. And again, those links are going to be in this registration reminder you received in the post-webinar survey, as well as the chat window. So we've had, uh, well, we're at webinar number 36 right now, I think it is. These are just some of the webinars we've done right here. Uh, productivity tips and tricks, what's new in AutoCAD, a uh, couple of customization uh, webinars. So uh, quite a few out there. They are all located on our YouTube channel in the AutoCAD Exchange channel, I should say. Uh, build your AutoCAD IQ playlist. So uh, if you want to take a look at some of those, uh, many of the topics that we discuss in, say, this current webinar, or even future ones, uh, were expanded upon or touched upon in some of those previous webinars. So Sarah and I are part of product support, and 
One of the resources that we like to have everyone know about is our Autodesk Knowledge Network. The Autodesk Knowledge, Knowledge Network features many articles, um, but uh, as well as troubleshooting, as well as downloading. And so, for example, if you were to go to one of the products, say AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT, some of the typical inf uh, uh, tidbits of information you'd find there are uh, topics about getting started with the application, uh, learning and exploring uh, more about some of the uh, commands, features, functionality of the application. Downloads such as service packs, uh, hot fixes, as well as other sample drawings and so forth are available. I've put the AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT uh, specific links right here. Also available on this are troubleshooting uh, documents. So if you're having problems with a specific issue, uh, be it drawing related, application related, or maybe you just need to um, uh, find out which, maybe what you're doing or wrong or if there's an issue with the application, uh, check out the troubleshooting section. A lot of good articles there uh, that we in technical support have been writing uh, to make available to you. All right, that being said, let's uh, take a look at what the objective is of this particular webinar. Um, we're going to combine a little bit of old school and a little bit of new school uh, in, in this particular session. And basically, it's to help you improve your predictability productivity in AutoCAD. We know there are many ways to do things in AutoCAD, and we have many tools to do this with. And so uh, we're going to review some typical commands. In this case, I'll just throw it out there. We're going to use two commands and discuss one system variable. It doesn't seem like much. It may be a shorter web webinar than normal, but um, we are going to use the command line as well as other tools on the interface. Uh, the ribbon, for example. Uh, so a little bit of the ribbon, a little bit of the command line interface. And all this is to just kind of put things together using drawing aids that are available in AutoCAD. And uh, we're just going to create one simple drawing using the circle command, the trim command, and a system variable that I'm fond of called uh, Osmod, and uh, a little bit of object tracking. Uh, actually, just one functionality on that. Uh, keep in mind, this is a back to basics. And we do get some people saying, oh, getting feedback, oh, that was much too simple. I, you know, that's why I left the webinar. But um, I think everybody learns a little bit out of these webinars. Um, and again, we're trying to help people get comfortable with the application and how to use the tools. What I'm going to do in this webinar is show one way of creating a drawing. doesn't mean it's the best. It doesn't mean it's the only way. There may be better ways, uh, alternatives that may be more comfortable for you. Uh, this is my comfort level for working with this style of drawing. So uh, before I begin, and we will do that in a moment, I do have a couple of polls I want to throw out there. And uh, first of all, just to find out whether or not this is the um, first webinar that you have attended. And it does look like we are getting quite a few repeat attendees. I'll throw that data out there in a moment, but right now it's about 80 saying, no, this is not my first, and 20% saying yes. So welcome, everybody, again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close that. Let's uh, go ahead and just share that information there, kind of show you what's going on. So that is the first poll. I have two more quick ones here. And the second one is um, just to kind of keep track, we, we like to know who's using what uh, as far as the AutoCAD-based applications or using something other than AutoCAD. Uh, we like to know this so that we can tailor 
um, the webinars. Uh, and, you know, for the most part, these are tailored to AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. Um, for what it's worth, at the end of this session, I'll be showing some uh, upcoming events, and one of those we're going to have is AutoCAD for Mac. So that might be some interest. I'll talk more about that later. All right, so another 44% um, AutoCAD. I'm going to close that and just throw that up on the screen for you. So you all know who is joining us. So 24% AutoCAD LT, 19% AutoCAD Architecture, 11% Civil 3D or AutoCAD Map with 2% Other. Everything I show in this webinar can be done in all of these applications, although I'm not sure about the other. All right, last poll here. Just kind of curious how you work with um, um, with um, AutoCAD. Oh, I guess I didn't write that one up. So you guys have been spared a third poll. All right, since that's the case, let us go ahead and get right into the demo. By the way, this is all of us at work. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let me uh, switch my screen to AutoCAD. And again, like I said, this is uh, basically a simple drawing. And, and you may get, you know, a, a sketch or something from your engineer, and they show you how you know, what the size of the object is, how it's supposed to look, and it's probably not as clean as uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, you know, I, I've had cases where the uh, engineers who worked with me, you know, would go to, um, well, they'd have a late night outing to uh, brainstorm a little bit, and I'd end up with a uh, soaked looking watermarked uh, napkin uh, which had an outline of what I needed to draw. And you'd have to decipher what the heck was going on. So this is actually pretty clean. And you can see here uh, we have circular objects, so circles. We have some arcs. And, of course, uh, in this case, it is almost all the way dimensioned. Okay. Uh, someone could mute in the background there. Yeah, I apologize about that background noise. I'm not sure where that's coming from. All right, so let's get started. Um, the circle command, there's some options of the circle command that I know a lot of people don't really know about or, or touch. And, uh, you know, a lot, most people we will use center radius, center diameter. Um, I have made use of all these. I'm hoping most of you have as well. One we'll be using a lot of in this particular webinar is Tan Tan Radius. And Sorry, course, Booker, to interrupt you. Um, we are having some difficulties seeing your screen. Let me see. Naman, are you seeing the screen? Okay, I think we're okay, Volker. Let me just, okay. uh, I'll, I'll address these other questions as well. Thank right. you. Sorry yeah. about that. No, I want to make sure everybody's seeing it. All right, so I'm going to use the circle command to um, start this drawing. And right now, I'll just use it right off of the um, ribbon. And having, um, I'm just placing a start point here uh, using the node option. And I did this. Uh, in case I want to show you something later. But right now, uh, with the circle command, it defaults to a radius. I know that these two circles over here are a radius 0.5 and 1. And so I'll just type 0.5 for my beginning circle. Now, um, I, in a previous couple of previous webinars, I've showed some shortcuts, and I'm going to use one of those right now. I need to, instead of drawing an arc, I'm going to just use circles to complete this entire drawing. And I need to reference the same center point that I used for this circle right here. And yeah, I could just use a center O-snap, 
but instead I'm going to use what is called the last referenced point function, and that is the at symbol. So I'm going to go back into the circle command. Typically I could go right up here, or of course I'm, I can hit enter, which I'm going to do right now to repeat the command. And then using the at symbol, the last reference point function, I'm going to hit enter and it starts my new circle at the center or last point that I picked in the drawing. Now that there was going to be a radius of 1, so I just hit 1, enter. So there's my starting foundation. Now, let me talk about O-snaps here. We can use O-snaps to pick a, a precise point. We can also use those to reference a, a point uh, in order to gain placement at another point in the drawing. And I'll show how that works in a moment. And our O-snaps are all located, well, for the most part, we can get to them right here. And here I can choose which ones I want to have resident in the drawing. And I can enable or disable those with check mark shows that they're on. For this drawing, all I really need is the center O-snap. What you're seeing right here are the four that I like to use the most endpoint, midpoint, and center, uh, endpoint, midpoint, center, node. And another place we can get to this is in the object snap settings. So I could easily clear all of these right here and then select center. To get into this dialog or to get to this menu, to me, that takes a lot of time. I like to use a system variable. And I'll get back into this dialog in a moment. And it is called Osmode. And right now, the value you're seeing on my command prompt, that is a bit code that AutoCAD uses to set the O snaps that you saw enabled. I'm going to type 4, and that changes it to a center O snap. So let's just verify that, make sure I'm not lying. You'll see only center is selected right now. So how do we find out more about this? Because we want to know, right? I do. F1 will take you to the AutoCAD help. And I'm going to go ahead and type Osmode. Oops, got to spell it right, though. And this tells you what all those variables are, or those bit codes. So endpoint plus midpoint plus center plus node equals 15, 3, 7, 8, 15. So that was the initial value you saw. I just wanted to use center, so I typed 4, and that quickly allows me to change back. Once I'm done with this part of the drawing, maybe I need to do something else. All I have to do is type 15 to get back to the ones that I like to work with. As it is, I do need center point. So having said that, this is the only O snap I'm using, but I'm also going to use what's called auto snap or object snap tracking. What this allows me to do is create a linear, um, my, place my line work in a linear manner without having to go into ortho, which forces us to that constraint. So getting back to the drawing here, I'm going to go ahead and place this circle. And instead of an arc, I'm also going to create a circle here. And I need this second circle to start 6.62 units from the first. So I'm going to go back into the circle command. And I'm going to reference the center O snap point of this circle, and I'm just going to point to the right. Doesn't matter how far, and I'm going to type 6.62, enter, and there starts my circle. Now I just need to give it the size I want, which is 0.75. Again, I'm just going to repeat the command instead of going up to the ribbon by hit, hitting either the space bar or the enter key. And using the last reference point symbol, I'm going to tell it I want a radius of 
0.75. So there we have the beginning of this gasket here. Now, I also need to have this outer circle. This could be an arc, but it's much easier just to use a circle. And I need an underlying one here as well. Both uh, One of these has a radius of 6, the other one radius 4.5. So I could type in circle at the command line, but I don't want to use the default radius. What I want to do, because I, I don't know where the center point of that circle is going to be. Yes, I could check it from this particular drawing, but hey, I'm not going to have that. This is just a reference. Typically, that'd be a sheet of paper or something. So I'm going to use this function here, tan tan radius. And what that does, it creates an O snap within the circle command. And it's telling me, OK, pick the first tangent point of that circle, and you'll see the tangent O snap marker. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the second one. And now it prompts me to specify the radius for this circle, which was 6. And so I now have my circle with nice smooth tangencies uh, on the outer circle there. I'm going to go ahead and go back into this, but this time I'll just hit the center uh, space bar to repeat it. And I'm going to go ahead and I can type TTR at the command prompt, but I can also, in the newer versions of AutoCAD, just click that option on the command prompt. So again, tangent point, tangent point, and a radius of 4.5. And so now we have something that looks like somebody who just got out of a bar fight. And just for grins, the power of layers. Okay, all right, sorry, I had to do that. We'll freeze that layer again. Uh, what we need to do now is clean this up a little bit. Uh, I could add more objects to this, but it's going to get kind of crowded. So I'm going to go into the Trim command. And it, of course, tells me I can select either an object as a cutting edge or select everything. I don't want to select everything because it will force me to erase stuff that's left over. So what I'm going to do is just pick the two outer smaller circles here as a cutting edge, enter, and then I can just select the objects I want to trim away. Uh, I could use a fence. I can, right now I'm just using a crossing window. I could have also done it picking individually. I'm finished with the trim command. Now I want to go ahead and place these arcs in the drawing in order to create this inner shape. So I am going to use the circle command again. For that top one, I'm going to reference, whoops, yeah. I actually repeated the TTR. The last command on the ribbon, or the command that's on the ribbon in the current session is the last command I used. And typically I would have just typed in C for circle. If I want to get back to center radius, I need to select it from here if I'm going to use the ribbon. And that's what I want to do. I want to reference that center point and give this a radius of 5.375. Then I'm going to repeat the circle command. I just hit the space bar. And I'm going to go ahead and reference this center point and give it a radius of 5.125. And again, it's getting a little crowded. So I'm going to go ahead and use the trim command again. And I'm going to select this circle here. And this circle here is my cutting edges. And I'll have to do some cleanup because what happens here is because that circle is a, um, whoops, actually selected too much there. Uh, because that circle uh, is the cutting edge, anything within it is going to remain in place. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that, get rid of this, 
just doing some additional cleanup. Yeah, fingers, there we go. All right. So we have this outer inner arc, outer inner arc, but how do we get this? Well, that's where tantan radius comes in again. I'll zoom in on this a bit. And again, I'll go up here, tantan radius. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this here as a tangency point. And then this circle as another tangent point. And type in the value of 0.375. It's the radius we have here. And I will repeat the circle command, and this time I'm just going to type TTR, pick that tangent point, pick this one, and repeat, or, and hit the spacebar or the enter key to accept my last given value for that uh, circle radius. Again, I'll hit spacebar, TTR, pick, pick, enter, whoops, I'm wrong side. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, I, every, those who've been here, awkward moment, they're not unusual with me, okay? TTR, there we go, TTR one more time, pick, pick, and, yeah. Two awkward moments in a row. How common is that? There we go. All right. So now we have some more stuff here, but we need to do some cleanup to make this look the way it does in this other drawing. So again, I'm going to use the trim command. Typically, I would type that in, TR being the command prompt. And I'm going to go ahead and select, whoops. <laughs> We're doing good, people. TR. All right, pick. I hit enter is what happened after I hit the turn, hit the command up there because I am used to the command line. But I'm going to just select these um, outer edges here as my trim line. So the circle inner here, circle inner. And then I'm going to tell, look, I'm ready to trim some stuff. And it allows me to trim stuff here. And we're starting to get that nice smooth curve. Still have to do some additional cleanup. Repeating the trim command, I'm going to use the select all function this time. And now what I can do is um, use trim away from this arc right here, these arcs, as well as from uh, the circle here. So having trimmed that away, I'm going to go ahead and trim that. Oops, I wanted to get rid of this and this. And there we go. And there's the finished product. So those, the, the items that I've used here to just compare Complete this, and without talking, with just me doing it from the command line, maybe uh, I could do this in three minutes. And maybe there are people who could do it faster. Okay, I'm not disputing that. But just n taking a look at a drawing, thinking about which tools, which drawing aids, which commands you're going to be using, you can plan out ahead a little bit to create the object you need with minimal amount of work, really. Um, no construction lines were used here, so none of those got harmed in the process. Um, it, you know, we kept everything as simple as could be to, to get the job done. So I used the circle command, TTR. I used the trim command. And I used the Osmode system variable, which allows us to change our OSNAP settings. And I used object tracking to reference this center point uh, here, uh, reference this center point here to gain that center point. And that is about it. We're going to take questions in a moment.
And uh, if anybody needs to see something again, we can do that. Let's uh, go ahead right now and just take care of a couple of resources I'd like to show you about, as well as the upcoming webinars that we have in the works for you. And then we will see how much time we have left for questions, which should be quite a bit. So, um, Sarah, if you could let me know when you're seeing the screen, that would be great. Yep, I can see your screen. I can, I can see your screen. Excellent. Thank you. All right, so uh, some additional resources. There's really not much to this. We'll have the drawing that I've been using available for download as well as this PowerPoint. Here's some more information on that Osmode system variable. A little bit about drawing circles. I know it doesn't seem like there should be much to it, but you know there are five different ways built into the circle command plus a sixth macro called tan 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 that has been added to the uh, circle command. So a lot of functionality there. The trim command, many different way, uh, functions. We actually did a webinar not too long ago on the trim command. A great place to get help from end users as to how they are getting their job done if, you, if you're having a stickler of a problem is to check out the Autodesk Knowledge Network community where you can have access to the forums as well, our discussion groups. Um, there is a Hitchhiker's Guide to AutoCAD Basics, which touches on the basics of many of the commands uh, that are commonly used in AutoCAD, anything from drawing, editing, plotting. Check out the Autodesk blogs. Um, quite a treasure trove of knowledge available here. Lynn Allen, Sean Hurley, Heidi Hewitt, and more. And depending on which application you're using, topics specific to your application, Civil 3D, AutoCAD Map, etc. Finally, our coming attractions. Good stuff coming up. Uh, Dave Pothier will be doing Beyond the Basics, working with constraints in AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. So AutoCAD LT, you cannot use a create constraints, but you do work with them if somebody in AutoCAD has created them. So it's a good one for those using AutoCAD LT to understand how constraints work. And then we'll have a special guest star, star and that is Jim, and pardon me, Jim, I know you're online right now, up here who will be doing a AutoCAD for Mac, taking a look at AutoCAD for Mac, uh, our Mac and Cheese webinar. Uh, that should be a good one. We'll be taking a look at some of the differences between AutoCAD and AutoCAD for Mac. Then we're going to continue on with our third dimension series uh, with Steve and uh, Victoria. And then we will have a Beyond the Basics External References Part 2 which will be presented by Martin Stewart. Visit our webpage to register. Send us additional feedback. You can leave it there, questions you may have. Uh, this is a landing page that uh, you can go to. Uh, we'll do questions here after this presentation, after I'm done talking in a moment. But hey, feel free to leave us feedback on uh, any topics you'd like to hear about. And be sure to put Build Your AutoCAD IQ in the subject line because we have many different webinar teams and uh, we want to know what you're referring to. So uh, that being said, uh, maybe we can take some questions. Sarah, uh, Naman? Okay, great stuff, Volker. We have a question from Renee. She, she missed the app command. She wanted to see if you could demonstrate that one more time. And there is someone else who had a question about that as well. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back to my monitor here. So the the at command is it's not really a command; it's a function, and basically uh, it references the last point that I used. So let's say I draw a line here, and I this is my last point used right here. I want to maybe start some text at the end of that line or uh, say another object like a circle. So if I go into that circle command, all I have to do is use the shift and then two, the number two key, uh, 
which has the at symbol um, for the uppercase of the uh, shift key, <laughs> and I hit enter. And, um, oops, oh, I went back, sorry, my goof. This was on Tan Tan Radius again. Uh, okay, let's do that again. So I want to use, I need to draw the, uh, here's the important thing. Because I goofed, I probably lost the last reference point that I wanted. So I'm just going to do this again. Line command, pick an endpoint. This is my last reference point. I'm going into the circle command. I type C at the command line. Shift, the number two key, which is the at symbol, enter, and it starts the circle off. And I'll give it whatever default value for that circle that I had. I hope that clarified. I can use that for many different things. Um, if I ID a point, um, so I'm using a command called ID, and um, I'm going to use the center or endpoint of that ND. Okay, just having ID'd that point, I've now referenced it. So again, I could go a circle, enter, at symbol, enter. You'll find your own uses for this function. Um, I know what I use it for, which is a lot when ever placing at the center of a point I previously picked. I hope that made sense. All right, let's see. We got um, a couple questions here about um, the reason of not using the fillet command instead of drawing circles. So, so I had two people who wanted to know could you use the fillet command instead of doing it the way that you demonstrated, Volker. Well, um, I'm sure you could. It. Um, You would the thing with the fillet command is you would need to know the radius for trimming away. You know, so if I'm let me just undo this away here. So right here, um, you know how Yeah, I I don't know that I'd even consider the fillet command to be honest. Not not in this scenario here. Um the only other tool that I would see used is an arc, but the hard part then is where is the start point of the arc and the end point of the arc, which is why TTR is so easy to use. And maybe somebody else out there might have a better answer to that. Um, I could fill it stuff away, yes, but there's no, I don't know what the radius would be for that fillet in order to get a smooth transition. So trim, yeah, We trim. have Craig here, he said trim the waist and fill it the, to zero. Yeah, fill it to zero would um, certainly do some of that. So let's do that. Just to, uh, so we go fill it, my radius um, right now is set to 0 0.375, I'm gonna put zero. And let's do, actually, we need to get rid of that. So we'll start over here. And there. So that works. And here. And yeah, that one there's not working. Yeah, so right there it wouldn't work. Maybe it's from this side. Let me try it on this side. Yeah. So, I mean, it does work to some extent. The fillet command is pretty powerful. I use it for trimming all the time. Um, everyone has their own way of doing it. I'm not... Um, and that's the great part of um, AutoCAD. There's so many different ways of doing um, different types of workflow, I think. Yeah. I hope that we answered your question. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and you know, thanks for pointing out the fillet to radius uh, set to zero. When we did our um, webinar on the fillet or 
filet command, as I like to say it, um, <laughs> just because it's close to lunch for me. Um, you know, that was one of the things we did show is how you could use it as a trim command and in a lot of cases you could even create a nice end cap for another object just you know for two other objects not having a um actually let's do, kind of explain what i'm saying here whoops do you and so digressing a bit here but we do have a little bit of time so something like this, using the fillet command, regardless of the radius, you know, it allows me to quickly create an end cap or putting a line through here, having that fillet command, it allows me to quickly trim. So, um, you know, there's so many tools that will do the same thing. Oh, anyway. Um, okay, let's see if we can get to. We have also good feedback on the Osmo command as well, but I'll yeah. let, Vol I'll let um, Naaman go ahead and give a question as well. No, I was just uh, wondering if uh, um, somebody was asking about the object tracking, if you yeah. can show that. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, object tracking works. Uh, there's two types, temporary tracking and O-track, just to... Um, uh, get that clear, because somebody I'm sure will mention it. I hope so anyway. Uh, but uh, we're here I just used object tracking, and it just allows me to reference a point. So an example I used to use prior to AutoCAD release 16, uh, 2016 coming out is, um, you know, AutoCAD 2016 has a um, um, geometric center OSNAP. But if I don't have that, uh, how would I find the centroid of this rectangle? Let's say, and again, I'll use a simplistic circle. Let's say I want to place that circle within the center of the rectangle. Okay, so in the past, what we would do is maybe draw a line either horizontally, another construction line going vertically, or maybe going from uh, corner to corner. Then we'd place our circle where those lines intersect, and then we would erase the construction lines. With O-Track, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I'm in the, uh, let's go into the circle command. And what I do, because I have a running O-Snap right now of midpoint, right? I don't need center, but I'll leave it on. But because I have this midpoint running O-Snap, it allows me to reference the point on an object. And it leaves a little blip that may be kind of hard to see right here. If I go over it, it's gone, but now it's back, right? That is just a reference point. And as I move my crosshair where it intersects with that reference point, it leaves a tracking marker. I'm going to go over here and reference this point. And all I have to do, whoops, I lost it by going over it again. All I have to do is bring my crosshair to where those two reference points intersect. I pick my starting point and I've referenced the center of that circle. The trick with object tracking or auto track, uh, I think it's called, I forget, I always call it O-Track, um, is that you need to have a running O-Snap working with that. Here's another example and this is the one I used kind of in the webinar, repeating the circle command. Um, yeah, I have a midpoint. So I want my new circle to start, uh, say, two units away from that midpoint to the right. So I'm just typing, this is called direct distance entry. Typing two, enter, and I place my circle. And if I were to uh, dimension this, I didn't need to check midpoint, but either way, I mean, here's, here's my center. Whoops, that actually threw me off, didn't it? <sighs> Never ad lib in front of an audience, people. Okay. Let's see. Two units. So, I mean, it's a real easy uh, tool to use in lieu of uh, construction lines.
Any other? Uh, awesome. Thanks, Volker, for yeah. um, showing that for us. Um, let me just scan through the questions. Um, I have one. Um, it could. She she wants to know if you could show how to create a paper space layout and give it a scale. <laughs> um, you know, so we. Yeah, that could be a yeah. question for. Um, so we have actually we've we have a webinar that we did on doing just that it um i mean it's not that hard but it's really off topic here and um we will be redoing um uh, webinars on plotting and layouts uh very soon in the future uh because um just to add stuff to the previous webinars but also uh for the newer audiences that we have so yeah you know uh, I, I'm not trying to blow this off or anything. Um, it, there's so much involved. It's simple, but there's so much more to it. Um, uh, and here I go. But just creating the in the layout, we set our scale factor um, for that viewport or whatever uh, right down here. But there's so much to it um, as far as setup goes as well. I really don't want to confuse the issue right now. Okay, yeah, and she can. We can also put the links available for our past webinars that do um, demonstrate creating that layout for you, and then we can also take questions and feedback in. Um, yeah, in our landing on our landing email. page on our landing page or the email. Um, the webinar we actually split it into four webinars when it came to our plotting series. So there's quite a bit of information there. And that link that's um, been provided to you uh, will um, uh, show you all those previous webinars. OK, well, I think that about sums it up for the questions. Um, now, I mean, if you, wanna, if you have any other questions that you want to address, please feel free to throw anything in there as yeah. of now. Yeah, we could. I don't see any other questions. Okay. That's good, you know. No, that's good then. Uh, you know, we'll give everybody some time back. I'm sure everybody wants to get their work done so they can leave for the weekend, right? Uh, I'd like to do one quick poll, though, before you do leave. I almost always forget about this. But basically, um, did you learn anything in today's webinar? I mean, that's that's, you know, our end goal here is to try and... And if we get most of you, I'm happy. Um, for those who didn't learn a thing, um, really sorry we wasted your time. Uh, and uh, hopefully some of the future sessions will um, uh, do more for you if you choose to attend. Uh, I'll throw this uh, feed up on the screen right now, uh, the results of this. And um, we will after saying thank you very much for attending today. Um, we do know your time's valuable. Uh, we'll go ahead and say goodbye. So, Naman, Sarah, say goodbye. goodbye. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks, everybody. A safe okay. weekend. A safe weekend.